Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Sensei is here. Sensei is here. It's me, back again. It's been a while since I've done a live stream, and now doing it for the first ever Puerto Rico Virtual Con. I gotta say, loving it, loving every single minute of it. Been watching it ever since it first started. Loved all the videos, loved all the live streams that everybody's been doing. It's been awesome seeing everybody talk about what they're up to, what they're doing, and what new things they're making and seeing cosplays that you know people were going to debut this year at the Puerto Rico Comic Con but since you know we're dealing with, with Corona right now you know it's like but it's good to be here good to be live again it's been a while you know hope I see a few more people joining the live stream you know so far just waiting to see if there are more people that join the live stream so far I think we got we got Orville we got Wonder Woman here AKA the sensei yelling woman. She's always like all about the sensei, all about the sensei. So just waiting on, on more people to arrive, you know, once you're in the room, you know, let me know. William, hey, William, what's up? I'm doing good, doing good here. Doing this little cosplay tip and material 101 panel for the Puerto Rico virtual con. Uh, you know, it's like I said, it's an honor. I decided to, you know, cut my hair a little bit, you know, you know, want to want to look my best for everybody. You know, I don't want to be a bum. You know, I kind of looked bummy last night when I was live with Jason Font on on Instagram. So, who do we have here? Who do we have here? So far, we have Orville. I don't know. Wonder Woman's still here. She's probably like late. Or she left again, and William is here. Arvold probably busy doing something. So. so once you're in here, we're gonna just wait to see um, who shows up into the live stream. Uh, so yeah, Arvold, we have you here. I, I think you were like the first person here. What helmet you're making? Well, I'm making several different helmets, guys. I'm working on several different helmets. Um, as you know, uh, a lot of obviously working on a lot of Power Ranger helmets. And you know, I'm going to tell people today um, that are going to be joining us for the first time what I'm going to be working on. And you know, if people that are interested. In the description, I have actually added a few links down there that actually tell you where I get a lot of my materials for the foam build, uh, for molding, casting helmets, and as well as other, like a, if you want to buy a 3D printer, I this I actually have added a link down there for um for a 3D printer that is the Creality CR10. It is a good printer to start off with. It's a good size build. About 12 inches by 12 inches by 15 inches. So I actually think it is a um, awesome uh, 3D printer to start off with. It's it's a little you know a little pricey, but you know uh, we all got to start off somewhere. And having this build size, you can actually do a full mass and you know bigger pieces in one shot, and then you know put them all together. I'm happy you're. I am happy with myself. Oh, I'm glad you are happy with yourself. Uh, Homero Arias. Jonathan Arias. What is up? What is up? Uh, so, yeah, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, a lot of the materials that I, I've been using because a lot of people are new to this, to this whole stream. So, you know, I'm going to be discussing. I have some of the materials here in the background. You know, we, we have a casted sword. We actually have a foam torso here that was made out of using the foam EVA the EVA foam from TNT cosplay which is about six millimeters something that I actually do suggest using six millimeter is like the best kind and you can't find these rolls in stores unless you live in the in the states where they have like Joanne fabrics and everything but you know here in Puerto Rico if you don't have access to that or if you don't live near like a Joanne's or something TNTcosplay.com is like the best place to get these and you can get large rolls they even now have a mega roll uh, it's it's a huge it's a silver roll right here almost stands about three feet tall so 
It's actually very good. You can do a whole, almost a whole armor with that one sheet. Uh, nice, nice. My YouTube got in 500 views. Well, congratulations on the 500 views, buddy. Good. Congratulations on that. Um, so yeah, and I hope you, you keep doing it. Keep keep pumping those videos out. Do live streams whenever you can and everything. Uh, so looking forward to you getting to at least like a thousand views. Even 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 though I try still to get to a thousand views on on some videos, but yeah, you know there's always a beginning in cosplay. You know you're always gonna start somewhere, and it's always good to start with tutorials, videos, and asking questions. You know don't ever be afraid to ask a a question about what materials can you use, where can you buy your materials, how much would this cost, would this material work with this or would that work with with this, you know. Like, um, we have this helmet that we have up here. You actually see it. I actually created this the other day after one of the, the first live stream that was here for the T for the PRVC. Um, I was suggesting to the girl, I said she looks like Riri Williams from, from the Marvel Comics, which is Iron Heart. So I decided I would make a helmet for her, and I was like, might as well just try model it. Uh, do you plan on posting the Ironheart helmet for sale? Uh, it's something I am thinking about um, uh, offering for sale. Yeah, I, I think it, it'll be a good idea because there are no Ironheart helmets, and the character is very popular from what I know at this moment. So might as well uh, give her her due. You know, she the character needs her due, and you know we're gonna we're gonna do that. Give it a little, so you guys can see the color scheme. Let's just take off the mesh pattern. And you guys can actually see the helmet right here in all its beautiful glory. So yeah, this is how the helmet would look. Um, all painted, colored, if you add lights to the eyes and uh, light to the top of the head. Kind of has that Optimus Prime vibe on the top, you know, Optimus Prime in the original. Uh, how long does it take to make a helmet? Well, it all really depends on the helmet. The helmet can take about um, maybe six hours to a little bit more. It all depends on details um, on the helmet. We got little tiny details, big details. Uh, can take about maybe a day if you are very good at 3D modeling. And if you are going to be going into 3D modeling, um, and you want to try sculpting, um, it, you can use a mouse, you can use a mouse, but what I suggest is to buy a graphics tablet. You can get one uh, for about 50 to 60 dollars on Amazon.com and I actually bought one that's a, it's a fairly introductory tablet. Let's see if I can actually show it to you guys right here. This is the tablet that I use. Uh, for when I am doing my sculpting and everything just to get uh, a nice base shape and This is a, a pressure point pen So you can actually the the more pressure you add the more deeper your sculpting will get so you know with a mouse You can't really do that that much. So uh, this is the UG graphics tablet Like I said, you can get this actually for about 50 to 60 dollars on amazon.com. It's a great introductory um, tablet um, and then when you get a little bit more comfortable, you could probably upgrade to something a little bit more. Uh, some actually have a screen on the on the graphics tablet where you can actually do it like if you were drawing, and you all have to see what you're working on, and uh, you don't have to go up and down like bob, bob your head like a bobblehead. <laughs> so this is something that I would highly recommend if you want to start 3D modeling and you want to do some sculpting because doing mesh modeling is different from sculpting. You know, like you're working with digital palette. So I would say get something like this, a, a starter. I would recommend the UG, it's a good starter one. I've been working with it so far. And I've only been model, 3D modeling for about six months. So uh, that kind of probably tells you a lot. You can actually get a little bit far, just even with just a introductory tablet graphic right here. So, so that's something really fun to work with. Uh, Ironheart is currently popular because a lot of fans are hoping she'll appear in the MCU to make Iron Man's place wild. Well. Yeah, true, true, that, that it actually is something that a lot of people have been hoping for because they don't know if it's gonna be Riri Williams or if it's gonna be 
Tony Stark's daughter. So, you know, it's like the debate, who will be the new Iron Man or, or should I say Iron Woman? You know, who, who or Iron Person, if you want to, if you don't want to get technical. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, I, did a, I did a live stream the other day and it got me up to, uh, nice, 49 subs. Where can I find a drawing tablet that has a screen? You can actually find one also on, on Amazon. They do, but uh, the ones with the screens go for a few hundred. So, you know, if, like, like if you don't know how to do sculpting yet, I would start small. Uh, don't jump into something really, really expensive in the beginning when you're starting out. You know, you want to take baby steps. Don't just jump in into the deep end of the pool uh, because, you know, then you'll be like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to work it. Now I'm like, completely. So, <laughs> Uh, the kind of face you make. Uh, so yeah, for 3D modeling, uh, the program that I use is Blender. It is a free 3D modeling software. You know, other softwares that they have out there nowadays are very expensive. Uh, go for a few hundred and you have to subscribe and sometimes you can pay for a yearly subscription and it'll go close to a thousand dollars. You know, depending on the actual program. So with Blender, you can actually start off with this one. It is totally free. And the new version is actually very user friendly. The format is somewhat similar to the Photoshop CS programs. Like it, it, the way it is done and formatted, it kind of looks very similar to that. So if you have, have used Photoshop, I think you will be able to jump to this and be able to figure it out. Um, like I said, when I first started, the original one was a, very hard to figure out. It was kind of like, I didn't know how to do this, I didn't know how to do that. And the new one that came out earlier this year, um, 2.8, um, very user friendly. I was able to figure it out within a matter of months, like two months I was able to figure it out. I watched one video tutorial on how to do it by Kamui Cosplay and her husband was making a alloy um, headpiece, a headdress or headpiece, and just that one video, I was able to get the gist of exactly what he meant. Other channels that I watch, they don't really do it, they do like a time lapse. So, if you guys want to learn how to do a basic structure, uh, I would say go to Kamui Cosplay. They're actually, her husband was modeling the headpiece for, for Alloy. Uh, not wearing a cosplay? No, because my cosplays are bulky and hot, and I live in Puerto Rico. I die before I end the stream in heat. I have no AC, and AC is a cosplayer's best friend here in Puerto Rico, and a lot, a lot of water. <laughs> are you wearing a cosplay, Wonder Woman? Uh. Sensei Oscar, yeah, that's what they call me since the last time I did a live stream. This was Sensei this. I don't I don't even remember how that happened. But yeah, you know, this like I said, this is a, a great program. Um, so for anybody who just uh, just joined us onto the live stream, I, what I've been talking about right now recently is if you guys want to start off working in 3D modeling, you want to try it out for the first time, uh, you don't have to go waste a whole lot of money from your wallet uh, and go for like a big giant expensive program that's very well known I'd say this program blender very well known very positive reviews I even re recommend it highly to anybody who wants to start 3d modeling this you can actually do 3d modeling with mesh planes and lines and edges and vertices as well as doing digital sculpting and you can do a very very basic digital sculpt of the form that you want and after that you can actually take it into the, um, the mesh portion of it and then you can do the meshes around the body of the sculpt that you did to get this type of result of like you see here with the re, the re I don't know why I keep like jumbling my words when I say her name the Riri Williams uh, Ironheart helmet so maybe I'll just say Ironheart so this is the, the kind of result that you can actually get working with Blender and it's free guys. It is absolutely free. You don't have to worry about uh, 
like wasting the whole wad of cash that you have and then not being able to work with this program. Like I said, uh, to everybody else, if you worked with Photoshop, the format of this new 2.8 Blender is very similar to the format of Photoshop. So if you know a basic uh, studies of Photoshop, you can do this program very easily. I've only been working with 3D modeling for myself for about five months now. Before I had other people do it for me and I was trying to always find tips and tricks on how to do it, it was very hard. But then I saw the video for, uh, by Kamui Cosplay on YouTube where her husband actually did a alloy headdress, headpiece, and that one little short video, I was able to figure out every single thing that I could and just move on from there. Uh, what was the name of that tutorial again? Um, I think it was uh, just go to Kamui Cosplay and 3D Modeling and you, and you probably see and the thumbnail should be of, her, of Alloy and of, of her husband. So that should be it because there's two versions. One. Want to do some peppercura files for your for your cosplays where you, you don't if you don't know how to really make a pattern and draw it out onto a, a mannequin you can actually do the same thing here in blender uh, using like a basic structure of a mannequin or a model of a person that fits almost your same frame and then you can adjust it to your measurements and it's very very simple and easy and if anybody has questions after this panel Feel free to ask, ask me any questions you want in the comments. I will I answer everybody's questions as fast as possible I always make sure to respond to everybody's questions as well as you know Give them a thumbs up and a heart for every you know every comment I get uh, Are you gonna do the suit for that helmet? I'm most likely am because I do there are a lot of photos uh, Riri's armor so I think I will do it. I'm just gonna be working on a mannequin, like of a body structure, like a basic, basic form. That way, I can work on the armor on top of that base model, and you know, put all the pieces and have them link up in a certain way, so that way they all fit perfectly. And then, and this is the best thing about 3D modeling, guys, that if you have a model and you're the one that made it, you can actually adjust and stretch out the model in its proportions to actually. Fit your body type and then later on use that same file from blender and change it if that if ever somebody wants to commission that same armor from you and they want it to fit to their size so this thing is the, the best thing you don't have to wor worry about wasting paper to make a pattern just upload the file change the proportions and stretch out everything or decrease sizes increase sizes and you can actually get that armor to you know to that other person's measurements in the in the way they need them to be. Uh, my plan is to get a hundred subs by the end of the year. All right, cool. Well, I hope you do get a hundred subs before the end of the year, or at least before Thanksgiving. You know. Uh, dude, let's see what I guess. I think I'm gonna. Do. All right, go. I think go do go go do a live stream. What is up, Toby? What is up? What is up? What's up? What's up? So yeah, you know, for. For like 3D modeling, uh, start off with Blender and you know work your way up. Always good that when you're working with Blender, you can actually do several different views. You can use a front view, a side view, and a top view of the actual model, especially if you're working with a helmet. With some models that I've recently worked with, I actually do have a, another one right here. Let me see if I can bring it up for you guys. Let's see here. Um, let's go over here, and I'm going to open a file. First, I'm going to save this one just in just in case because you know a few times there are those problems always make sure you save guys because there are always those problems where things can happen so here's an, another model I just recently made based on somebody's fan art and this is like a some like what they would picture a movie Green Ranger helmet would be so with this photo right with this model right here I only had one image I only had the, the the one image that was a side view 
So the, I had no top view, so I basically had to guess from the from the details that were here. I already knew it would be mirrored to the other side. So you just have to take it very slowly and, and adjust all the details. And as you can see right here, all the planes. Let's see here. See if I can bring it up here. So as you can see, there's every detail is one vertices, and when you curve and round the subdivision, it'll take all that sharpness away and round it just this, the right way that you want it. So if you want to do an STL file, it has to be like this. You use a subdivision, smooth it completely out. Uh, but if you're going to do it as a, a pepper you can just keep it boxy like that. That way, you know, not this many vertices, obviously, because it's probably too many uh, <laughs> for a pepper curl file. So, you know, something like this is very simple. It was only with one image. Uh, so, but it's fairly easy. You know, all you have to do is just take your time, take it slowly. Ne don't rush into it. Don't don't just jump head first into something difficult and, and overly stretch yourself out. Cause, you know, everything takes time in, in the process of 3D modeling. So, um, Let's see you learned your lesson last time you didn't yeah yeah that's right that's right guys I didn't learn my lesson one time something happened with the computer and I lost a good portion of my work and I had to start all over after like from like what three four hours prior to the to losing the file so I ended up losing a lot of work and I had to redo a whole lot of stuff so lesson number one when you're doing 3d modeling uh, always remember to save constantly so that way you don't have a um, boo boo like I did, you know. It's a it's a big issue. So um, speaking of other things, now when it comes to cosplays, not everybody has a 3D printer. So what what are the other things that we can do? We can actually work with foam. We have, so for a prime example, we have EVA foam, and there are several different builds that can be done with EVA foam. You can do foam weapons, you can do foam armor, you can do foam helmets. And for example, I have this. We have the foam armor that we have right here. Uh, let me just bring it over here, guys. So this right here is a foam armor, very, very flexible. And if you're wondering, this right here is actually not, it's neither paint nor is it latex on top of it this right here is actually faux leather spandex this is actually faux leather spandex and i would want i was thinking to myself what is a better way to work with this type of eva foam and not have to use plastic dip because a lot of us who work with foam builds we use plastic dip which is very nice but the only drawback about plastic dip is that over time the paint the plastic dip will rub against another piece of the armor or it'll rub against you know where some place you're walking through and it'll start to wrinkle and peel so that is the the bad thing about you know plastic dip but the good thing is this we have this faux leather spandex that we have like I actually have it right here this foam leather spandex is very stretched it can be stretched so it stretches only in two directions so you know it doesn't stretch in this way it only stretches you know right here but this is actually good because in the series like of Kamen Rider and also in in other series like Super Sentai Power Rangers and stuff like that um, this is something that they use for a lot of their armor it gives that effect that it's uh, a rougher and stronger material when it's not uh, because if using if you want to make an armor similar to like 3d modeling and 3d printing it, it'll be hard and it'll be rigid yes and strong but the the bad thing is if you're doing like an action scene or something that you have to jump around and kick you're probably going to injure yourself um, if you land on the armor and, and the armor will crack and break but it'll also bruise you and um, so and it's 
depending on how big it is, it could weigh a little bit more compared to the EVA foam armor that's done in, you know, Kamen Rider and Power Rangers. For example, the uh, the Green Rangers armor, it doesn't look like it's actually made of EVA foam. And there are two different versions. In EVA foam, there was another, like a cushion foam that was done in the original Power Rangers series in, in the 90s. Plus, uh, some people actually do a 3D printed version or a fiberglass version, uh, which is good for, you know, taking photos. But if you're going to walk around and you're going to use it for like a fight scene, I would go with EVA foam and something like this. Um, it's actually a good, a good piece to go with. And what you can do with this, when you're working with this material, um, you can use E700 or you can use contact cement and with a piece of foam, uh, put on some contact cement on here. Uh, spread it out like with a spatula with a piece of foam and also let and let it dry and then do the same thing to the piece of foam that ended. Let it dry, put on a second coat onto the foam, not onto onto the material, but only onto the foam. And then after you're going to start, you know, stretching it out and placing it until it's nice and smooth like how we have right here. So when I bend it, it it stays like that and it has that nice leather textured look to it so which is which is very nice uh, because like I said uh, there's a difference between that and you can actually obtain this faux leather along with I have another which they actually do have several colors they have several colors on TNT cosplay they actually have a red a nice like a nice red leather faux leather uh, that's also a spandex so you can actually get this on TNT cosplay I did put links for the faux leather the the latex coated spandex as well as the four-way stretch spandex so in case you guys are wondering about you know those you can get all of that material on the TNT cosplay website and all those links are actually in the description below in case any of you have some, you know, wondering where can I, where can I get this? Where can I get this? Um, so if if you guys um, ask me some some questions, you know, feel free to ask questions about you know other materials because I'm actually here to help you guys out, give you some more tips if there's materials you haven't used and are like wondering how they work and if, if they work for specific cosplays or others. As well, I do have a, another material here. Let's see if I can remember where I, I put it because I do also do have a fo like a foam clay so I'm trying to see ah here it is I have a foam clay right here almost forgot to bring this out and so we have this foam clay this was not from TNT cosplay so we have this forming foam so we have this forming foam. This is actually was purchased on Amazon.com. It comes in this size cup plus another one that's a little bit bigger. This one is about 300 milligrams, 300 grams actually, 300 grams, as well as a 500 gram tub. Uh, so this is very good. This actually comes in handy if you're going to add some details, as if you're like if you're doing King Koopa and you're making a, you know, a turtle shell with the spikes. This is actually something good where you can take the pieces of the foam and sculpt it to actually form a spike. And if you're putting it onto a base structure, make sure, and it's also like uh, EVA foam, like what we have here on these rolls, uh, make sure to wet the foam first and then put on the spike right there before it dries and then push it down and, and smooth it out. And after that, after it's nice and dry, you can actually take a small bit of sandpaper, I would say about maybe 150 or 220 grit sandpaper, and start sanding it smooth. That way it blends right into the shell. That, that way you don't see that it's like two separate pieces that give the illusion that it's actually one whole separate piece. Uh, so, But if you are going to be sanding um, foam, I would say do it outside somewhere very ventilated, have a fan nearby that will push the foam in the opposite direction away from you and always wear a respirator because you don't want to breathe in any particles of foam that is very bad for you. 
So make sure that you always use a respirator uh, when you're doing this. And you can sand this with 220 grit sandpaper, 150. You can even use a Dremel to actually carve in a, a couple of detailed lines and just sand it smooth so that way the detailed lines look like a, a tooth or a spike that's actually growing right out of the shell. Which is actually good for other things as well. For um, let's say you have an armor, you've got building an armor, but you're gluing it, and you have all these little holes, and you have these open seams. This right here is actually good as if to fill in those seams. Just like I said, wet the the armor, wet this piece of foam, smooth it out, let it dry, sand it, and then it'll make it look like there is no seam at all. Like it'll basically make your armor look seamless, literally. Uh, do you know what would be the closest type of, of glove or boot they use in the MMPR series? Um, I really do not know because I know the the gloves are somewhat like a um, of a faux leather type. Of, it's not made out of cloth. Um, it's almost similar to this material right here. Uh, this let me see if I. Right here, I got the piece right here. It's it's almost similar to this material, uh, but it but not stretchable. So basically, it's like a faux leather uh, stretched together, because uh, that way on the outside it, it does have a grip. Unlike when you have something that's basically just fabric and smooth, it just things slip out of your hand. So it's it's more like this type of material. I don't know if you can get a good view of that. So gloves would be more like this. It's like a faux leather material. So for the gloves, uh, like Power Rangers, it would be something similar to this. Um, have you heard that Bruce Allpress, who played Master uh, Font? Yeah, I, I heard. I heard. I heard about that the, uh, the day it happened. Uh, we use that for a map. What? Look at it. Works perfect. You're talking about the. You're, you're talking about um, this stuff, right? That you that you use this for a map. Uh, uh, see if I miss anything. Start. I started watching Common Rider too. But nice. Uh, you learn. Yeah. So come on, guys. Um, is, is there uh, is there a certain material that you guys have yet to use or that you're very curious about? Because you know there are several different things that can be used for a cosplay. You know there is. Uh, plastic resins, not to be confused with you know fiberglass resins, and there's also uh, mold making silicone, which is a brush on and a pourable mold making silicone, and there are several different types of resin. Uh, there's a pouring resin, there is a quick um, dry resin, and there is a rotary resin where you pour it into a mold and basically turn the mold. And as it turns, it coats the inside of the mold, giving you the the helmet or the prop. And when it comes to pourable, basically you're making a mold that's a basic that looks like a box has a hole in it, and you start pouring little by little, trying to avoid bubbles. You know, you don't want to get any any air bubbles into your into your mold. And so, uh, what paint is good uh, to use uh, for helmets? Well, uh, it all depends. There are several different paints that you can actually go with. If you're starting off with um, with helmets and everything, and you cannot afford um, automotive paint because a lot of helmets are used with automotive paint, since helmets are made out of plastic and bondo, similar to basically like a bumper of a car. Um, you can get custom paints made, but for a lot of people that I've actually helped in the past with the videos, you can actually I would suggest that the best type of paint is using Rust-Oleum. Uh, and I, I tend to use the two-in-one paint, it has like a uh, two-times paint, which is actually like a paint and a primer in the paint, so you get that nice, deeper um, coating, and it co the colors come out nice. In fact, I have an example right here of a helmet that I did paint uh, using that. So we have this Red Ranger helmet that was used painting with the red rust-oleum and you know rust-oleum black but it was you know the black was a flat paint the white was a flat paint the only thing that was not which was a little bit of a gloss but I made it look matte uh, by doing light light coats on it a little bit at a time a little bit at a time uh, I think 
for this helmet it took about four coats of red to get it without it coming out too glossy because the bad thing is when you're using rust-oleum and you're using gloss paint that whenever you tape over something even though you, it's probably dried for like two or three days you will still tend to have those markings of the tape stuck to the gloss and then you're gonna have to start all over again so when it comes to paint I always say try to stay with at least a flat or a matte or a satin uh, paint don't go gloss because I know you want gloss because you want it to be shiny but the gloss comes after when you, when you go for you know the clear gloss paint you know and the clear gloss that I actually use is actually also from the Solium. it is a clear gloss lacquer not to, not to be confused with clear gloss enamel uh, sometimes enamels will eat away at the rustoleum paint because it's two different types of paint the chemicals are you know from acrylic to an enamel it will start eating away and start getting these veins inside your your helmet from the paint uh, so i would say always go for like several light coats do it slowly don't rush and always when you paint make sure you have a distance of about two feet while you paint don't get too close because you want that deep color and rich uh, it'll it will happen you know just do it by several coats and staying about two feet away uh, that way you avoid any like you'll end up with those little drips if you get too close and then uh, when you want it to sit to dry those big glops will never dry they will still stay there and then when you try to press onto it it'll be like a bubble and your fingerprints will be all over it so you know something like that you know this clear gloss lacquer does the trick of a nice shine because you can actually see the ring light right there on the helmet so and this is actually a 3d printed helmet guys this is actually a 3d printed helmet so you can actually start off with something like this which is the white savage ranger that i i 3d modeled and you can go from that to this Something that you guys, anybody can can do this, uh, as long as you take your time and put your mind through it. I, I truly, honestly believe that that every single one of you guys can do this. Uh, any idea what the best way to color match your paint closest to the original colors of a particular crop? Well, you would not be able to do it. Um, I would say if you're going to do a color match. You, you would not be able to do it exactly with Rustoleum paint because there are no custom paints. Yeah, I would say take a picture of the helmet, like a good quality picture, nothing too dark or, or too light, and take it to like an auto body paint shop where they do like custom paints. You show them and they'll give you like a color swatch and, and they will try to match that color closest to the photo. And I know when it comes to the Green Ranger helmet, the color match is so, so, so hard because they did the paint themselves on the show. They were the ones that created the one, that paint in the Super Sentai series. And they didn't even share that secret with, uh, with Saban, you know, they kept that secret for themselves. So they had to, had to figure it out in the same way, you know, take a picture of it and then take it somewhere where they can get as close as possible to that exact match of that color green and, and then you'll be working with Autoboda paint so um, you can get it done in an aerosol can or if you have a air compressor you can actually get the tubs done and you can actually get them with or without the clear coat mixed into it so, um, those, there are several different options when it comes to painting a helmet um, not just the Power Rangers, but you know, DC, Marvel, like an Iron Man helmet, a Red Hood helmet, you know, all those things all take place and work the same way depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, uh, that's the problem. I always get marks even with a long time drawing. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Joshua? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, it, that is the problem. And even here in Puerto Rico, where, where I live, you can have the, the helmet sitting not directly in the sun. You never leave your stuff sitting in the sun. Especially here because you can it literally can make your stuff droop and melt. But that is something um, I would say is a pain. So if you can't find a red that's satin or anything by Rustolium, 
I would say go visit your local auto paint store and you know get a red from them um, in a matte finish and then you can use it at home and start spraying that and always make sure that when you do get paints done from them they give you like a code or something that will give you that color match that way uh, when you run out you can take that that number and everything or save the can don't throw it away take it back to them tell them you want um, more of this particular particular color that you asked for so and that that's a, another thing you have to always be to remember uh, how are you doing during this point I'm doing fine you know I'm pretty much a homebody um, it gets kind of lonely you know because I don't because I don't get to interact with people around here I live somewhat in the country and my next door neighbors are cows so so it's it's the same but different at the same time I don't know if that makes any sense but um, but yeah it's like it's the same as usual but different at the same time and you don't really got that freedom of going out like you want to go out but you got to be very careful when you go out uh, not like before like over here it's like now it's like I could go out sometimes I just didn't want to because there was not much to do except for go to the mall or go to the Walmart and look for, look for materials uh, so, well, thank you, thank you, Orville, thanks for, for being here for me. Um, but yeah, you know, guys, um, since I'm doing this panel, make, um, make sure to ask some questions, like, is there something else that you want to know about materials, because, you know, we're going to be discuss, we can be discuss about the spandex, as well, there is another thing that I did add, I did add something to the... Uh -huh. Hold on, I just got a message here. Uh, but yeah, you know, there is another thing I forgot to say this. There is a this live stream is actually a panel, guys. This, this live stream is actually a panel because I was asked to do one for the Puerto Rico Virtual Con, uh, which is a very wonderful idea that um, a young lady uh, decided to do because of the whole Puerto Rico Comic Con being canceled due to the, uh, the quarantine and the lockdown here in Puerto Rico. And it's been a wonderful idea. There have been so many other cosplayers that have streamed on Instagram and there is a panel later on today here on YouTube not on my channel but on on there on the Puerto Rico virtual con there will be a panel of my hero academia so if you guys want to check that out as well make sure to check that out later today just remember to put uh, Puerto Rico virtual con uh, my hero academia so you will see that it'll be a live stream guys so make sure you, you can actually ask these cosplayers some, you know some questions talk let them know I sent you, you know, they'll, I, I, they'll be good to you, they'll be nice. Uh, how do you minimize the paint, the paint lip from when the tape off of two separate? Well, um, I make sure, when, when I do it, I make sure I always use the blue painter's tape. I use the high quality one, not the cheaper one, because sometimes the cheaper one uh, tends to curl at the edge. And you will get like a little bleed of the paint. Uh, so I always make sure that I like push the edge always down to make sure, and always, always, always make sure, like I, I said earlier, to do light coats of the next paint. That way you don't get splatter and bleeding on the tape. So always go fully light. Wait, wait some time before the second coat. You know, and every time you're gonna do a coat, wait till it dries. Feel like if it's, you know, dry to the touch or if it's tacky. Because if it's tacky, don't don't put another coat yet. Uh, so make sure to always avoid that. And that should uh, help you with the, the whole bleeding um, from one paint to another and it not combining too well. Uh, have you seen the dark? I've seen the picture. I've seen the artwork of the, of the Dark Rangers compared to the Dark Rangers from the actual MMPR series.
so so yeah you know there's and there's another thing about speaking about paint and everything in the description below there's actually another type of paint that is that's being sold by tnt cosplay dot uh, cosplay supply dot com and that is some hex paint it is flexible paint they even have gold and other colors so this is something that guys you would probably be interested in and they ship it they ship these paints to you and this is a spray paint not a brushable paint it is a it is a flexible spray paint that you can actually use for I would say for your foam builds and everything so it's a good thing if you can't get a hold of a specific color and this type of faux leather or in the latex covered spandex uh, this is that is your next best option of getting um, something in a specific color to paint your foam builds so and those, like I said that link is actually in the description below so that way you can check it out later and see exactly you know the colors that they want and they do accept um, suggestions for other items that you feel that they should carry and if they have something out of stock you can actually put your email and they'll put you on a waiting list as soon as they have it in stock they will email you telling you it is now in stock you can get you can buy it now if you can, if you would like uh, Jennifer Jennifer what is up Jennifer uh, what should be the first steps if I want to buy a 3d printer and learn to use 3d print all right the, one of the first steps that you want to do when you're working with a 3D printer, first I would say is the studying which 3D printer will be best for what you want to make. There are several 3D printers out there. There is the FDM printer which does filament, uh, which is good for helmets and masks like Power Rangers, um, Iron Man, Red Hood, stuff like that. Also makes good for accessories. Um, there's also a another type of 3d printer which is resin printing which i'm actually i just recently purchased uh a few days ago i purchased last week a another 3d printer which is the elugu mars 3d printer which works in resin uh this one you can actually make gems jewels um little details that that you will need and they have these wonderful wonderful resins that come in different colors but in a transparent so if you want to make a uh, a red ruby or an emerald green they actually have these colors and you can you know put that there and it, it'll print it out upside down and hold it up and then all you have to do is just cut off the supports and it, they always come out so nice and clean that you don't have to even worry about sanding and losing detail and resin printers are good because the resin prints are UV hardened they cure in UV light so you can actually put it outside and it'll cure and harden even more as it as it sits in the Sun but don't put it too much in the Sun because you don't want to ruin the the print after you know making it so if you want to make a helmet or a mask or something and you want to start off and you don't want to do it in small little pieces like the one that I have is the CR 10 the Creative CR 10 it is a 300 by 300 by 400 uh, build size which means you know 12 by 12 by by 13 and it's good for making you know full-size helmets you can make a mask in one shot you can make a pistol which I actually have right here we have this 3d printed gun from destiny so this is actually from here to here was is the full height of my print bed I was actually able to print this all in one shot and you can see that it's pretty it's a, it's a pretty clean um, print and you can see all the detail even right there see you can see the all the detail in it it came out really nice so and the other good thing is that you can even take this same print and you, you can make a little miniature See, and, look at, and look all the detail is even in the small one all the detail is in, in, in the small version everything that you see in this, in this huge one it's right here in the small one look at all that all that little detail is right there so like if it was me I would suggest to you if you're gonna get a, a 3d printer you can get a Create the CR10, which is the link is actually in the description below. Also, for those who are interested in thinking about getting one, you can actually get a Create CR10 for about 349 right now. 
Uh, it used to be 500 when I first bought it, um, but now the price has gone down because more uh, other printers are being made. There is another a uh, Creality CR10S Pro. It's bigger. It's about 500 millimeter by 500 millimeters, uh, which means it makes huge prints. Uh, so that, like, if you want to buy one, I would say check out Creality. You can actually get it at BangGood.com, uh, which is where I got mine. Or you can even check it out on Amazon.com, which there is a, like a lot of Creality printers. But make sure you look for Creality because there are other ones like the Ender 3. They actually have another version of it, but their own version because it is a printer where you build it yourself, which is very fast and easy. There are tutorials all over YouTube on how to put all the pieces together because the main structure of the, of the printer is already put together, so you don't have to worry about having to worry about small little pieces where does this go where does that go where does this go and stuff like that so like when it comes to props you know something like this is actually pretty good on a 3d printer you get all the little details even right there all the little lines all the little buttons and everything the trigger right there and this is hefty this is almost about 50 percent uh infill um uh i would say pretty strong so Jennifer, I would say if you're going to be, if you're thinking about getting a 3D printer, uh, I would say if you want to go like a good decent size, uh, like if you want to make masks or helmets and stuff like that, I would say go for the Creality CR10 for the starter. Uh, and then if you ever want to do jewels, uh, I would go with the Elugu Mars, Elugu Mars uh, resin printer. It goes for about 229 for the silver one and 259 for the black one. They are the same size, same dimensions, uh, just the color is different. So I don't, I don't know why black is more expensive, uh, but I went for the silver. I wasn't about to shed out another uh, a bunch of dollars just for a color change. Uh, so, um, But th all those links are right there for that. And once you look at that, I would say the filament, the good, the good filament that I've already used, would be that you get the um, Hatchbox and Duramic 3D are like the two ones that I highly recommend. Uh, this is actually done with Duramic 3D. So you can see look, it's very nice. I like it. Uh, not, there's not a, much, a lot of cleaning on this one. Um, you wouldn't be able to do this size on the Alugu Mars. You could do a resin one, but not in not this whole size. Uh, the Alugu Mars does about five inches in height. So that's something good that you can actually guys get. Um, I almost forgot, guys. I almost forgot that. Um, also in the um, TNT, uh, TNT cosplay supply, you can actually get these. These are actually, you know, foam dowels. I actually used these in a previous build. Um, for any of those who follow me on Instagram, if you saw the Lion King um, headpiece, the headdress that was actually done for the Lion King musical on Broadway, I actually used these foam dowels to make the ring that goes around the head uh, and it's very lightweight you don't have to worry about weighing the helmet down more and more and more so this was actually very simple and you can even cut this in half to, if you ever want to do something like as a border for some type of detail design or anything and also it's actually good for like if you want to do like little spikes you know cut them right here off the center off the piece and just sand it until it's like almost at a point you know, rounded point, but a point nonetheless. So you have spikes, you have teeth, um, so many uses for this material. Uh, the the imagination just there's there's no limit to the imagination. Not to mention they also sell scales in foam. They have PETG plastic sheets where it's good for getting like little lenses for eyes or if you want to make a visor. And the good thing about the PETG plastic for a lot of you guys who don't know this. The PETG plastic is actually dyeable. You can actually dye this plastic in a vat of, of dye, but it has to be the I dye poly, which you can get it in several different colors on Amazon.com as well, which I, I always purchase. Uh, you can get like a, a pack or two for about $16.99. It is an expensive dye, but it's so well worth it. And the more you dip your plastic in it, the darker um shade that it'll get and you'll still be able to see through it 
Um, unless you kind of like dip it so long that it just turns pitch black and now all you have is basically a black piece of plastic. Uh, not a tinted piece of plastic. Uh, so that is something I, I would also recommend like if you guys are looking to make visors in colors and you can't find um, tinted sheets where you know that are used for like lamp for laminating for windows and everything I would say go for the i dye poly PEG plastic and the good thing is this that even if you vacuum form a visor you vacuum form it you can actually take that visor uh, and just dip it in there and it'll still take all the color you can leave one of the plastic sheets on it to protect the ceiling and the other side will get dyed and the other side will stay scratch free and it'll be good and um, that's another thing that you guys might be interested in that if you guys want to do some some forming plastic you know you want to do some vacuum forming it's a very simple process and you can even build one on um, yourself and have it at home you know if you're gonna vacuum form small pieces you can actually use a toaster oven to heat the plastic and all you have to do is make a box uh, out of some wood from Home Depot, drill holes into it, have a big, bigger hole onto the side, connect a industrial strength vacuum cleaner. Uh, when you put the plastic on, turn on the vacuum cleaner and it'll suck the heated plastic through the little tiny holes and form around the object that you want to make as a visor or a buck or lenses or figures and use it for like, some type of prop or something and it'll come out so nice as long as you heat it long enough you can even heat it in your oven and that's something I would say do all the time because you know if you live at if you live with somebody and they don't like you um, using their oven on something like that there are other ways around it you can even make yourself a a do-it-yourself heating box uh, basically well, all you would have to do with a do-it-yourself heating box I'm gonna give you this, this tip right here guys uh, I would have I would have made a video for it but I think it's better to explain it to you guys right now uh, if you want to do a do-it-yourself heating box like an oven, all you basically would need to do is take some foam core board, um, insulate it with some with some aluminum foil. At the bottom, what you can do is take a heater, uh, something that they sell on Amazon is a little tiny heater, but I would say get a decent size, maybe about uh, seven inches by seven inches, and put it on the ground of that of that heating box. And then you place your plastic sheet into a border, screw it shut or clamp it shut, depending on how you want to do it, and then let it sit there for uh, a few minutes. Um, and, but keep it, make sure to keep an eye on it because some heaters are stronger than others. And wait till you see that little droop in the plastic. Like there'll be start, you start to see like a little indent. That means that it's about time to start, you know, to pass it on and put it into the vacuum forming. So uh, make sure that always to look for the, the droop getting too low because you don't want to end up the plastic melting and then hitting into the heater and you, you know you want to keep safety first guys. It's very important for, for safety first when it comes to cosplay especially when you're working with something that has to do with heating and plastic. Uh, things can be get a little bit dangerous and you don't want to cause um, any fire damage or hurt yourself in the process by having melted plastic fall on you. So. You know, make sure you always wear protection in that process. Uh, in Kuga, I got to when he uses Pegasus from Properly for the first. Oh, okay, sweet. Uh, well, no problem, no problem, Jennifer. I'm glad that I could help. And if there's uh, anything in the description below, there are several different links for materials. And like I said, if TNT Cosplay Supply does not have what you're looking for, if it's out of stock, they do have the option of putting in your email address and joining their wait list. Uh, and I've done that before, and the minute something arrived into their, their stock, I got a notification into my email, and I ordered that sucker right away. And they usually ship within one to two days, and their shipments get to your home with, uh, around three business days. Like about uh, five to six days, you will have that thing arrive to your house. So that's one of the things that, about TNT Cosplay Supply that I really like because they are very speedy compared to like Amazon where right now you, you have to wait like weeks and weeks and weeks until you get your order. But I would say it's still um, a good process to, to do and to use. And I wouldn't 
change it for anything. But, um, so, do you guys have any more questions or anything? Because I know there is going to be happening another live stream uh, for the um, the PRVC, for the Puerto Rico Virtual Con. Because uh, I, I know they're going to be, soon tonight, they're going to be doing the My Hero Academia panel, which is going to be very cool for those who love My Hero Academia, such as myself. I love, I love my hero academia and my two favorite people, Deku and All Might. I love those guys. Uh, so yeah, you know, if you guys have any, uh, if you're new, please, okay. I was going to say, if you're new, I, was like, I already read that. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, if you guys have a, a specific question when it comes to, you know, what other materials you're curious about, uh, what other um, paints, blues, um, anything, you know, if there's something that you're wondering about at all, and I will tell you that speaking of glues, um, when you're working with cosplays, especially if you're working in a, working in foam, I would say do not use hot glue. Hot glue was very good in the beginning process of something, but sometimes the hot glue gives way uh, in high temperatures, and it will just, well, the seal will just give. Uh, so, the best thing I would say to use is contact cement, if for you who got it, for you guys who live in the U.S., you can actually use barge. Over here in Puerto Rico, we I would suggest um, the industrial strength. Um, it doesn't even have a name. It just says industrial strength contact cement. You can get it at your local Home Depot. You can actually get it in tubs about this big, um, or you can get it in, in the um, commercial grade, which it works just as fine. Commercial grade, you can pick that up at any Walmart, and they come in about this little size, and they come in a quart as well. So you can actually. Uh, find those easy. I think it's those materials are very easy to find at this at this, still at this time. Um, so, um, if any guys if you guys want to know anything, I think I'm gonna take off for now. You know, it's, we've done this stream for an hour. What is the best 3D printer for me? Uh, if you're talking FDM, I would say the Creality is the is the best. I love Creality. Um, when it comes to resin, I don't know yet because I'm gonna get my first resin printer. Um, on the 11th of next month, so I'm still waiting for that one to come out so I can try it. You know, I'll probably do an unboxing video. Nugget Sam, what is up, Nugget Sam? Now I want a chicken nugget. I haven't had chicken nuggets in months. I was like, I was like, at McDonald's today. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, what is up? What is up? What is up? And so, if any you guys have any any questions you want to ask, um, I, I'm more than more than be happy to answer every single one of your questions for, for cosplays, like uh, printers, glues, foams, uh, wood props, 3D printed props, resin printed props, uh, anything or everything. Uh, feel free to to ask me right now, and I will just I will do my best to to answer every single one of those questions, like I've been doing so far for everybody. Uh, I like chicken nuggets from Burger King. I like onion rings from Burger King. Though I haven't had onion rings in a while. So. And I'm probably not going to eat any because I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to slim down. Brother, brother's got to get in shape. He's got to try to look his best. You know? Especially if you're going to do, be doing cosplays with specific characters. You want to look your best. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but like I said, if there's... Anything you guys want to ask before I head off, you know, because there are other panels that are be going live. I don't want to steal people's attention away from it. So, if anything, add your questions to the comments down below because I will be answering every single one. And if you do send a comment, you get a heart and a thumbs up from me and a quick, quick reply as soon as I see your comment. So, but if anything, guys, I hope you guys had a good day. I hope you enjoyed the panel. I hope I was able to give you some very good information of cosplay props some materials and make sure to use all those links of those materials that I left for you guys even the 3d printers and the paints um, give, give TNT cosplay a lot of attention they sell some great and amazing stuff uh, I love it I highly recommend them uh, make sure to follow them on social media as well they do have a um, an Instagram um, Instagram profile so make sure you follow them there as well uh, I think my package that is it was waiting for got shipped to the runner Ew, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, but yeah, 
Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Have fun. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And make sure to go on Instagram and follow Puerto Rico Virtual Con and see the rest of the live streams before the convention is, uh, ends today. So especially check out the My Hero Academia channel. Make sure to be there, guys. I'll, I'll be waiting to see you guys there because I'm 